you are doing? Standing at attention, sir. And what were you doing before that? Following orders, sir. By hopping on one foot? Sir, you said left. I went left, sir. You like peeling potatoes, Private? Not really, sir. Then I suggest you put a halt to your silliness. Yes, sir. You know, kids, it does my heart good to see a soldier bring a halt to their silly antics. Why? Because it gives me hope. It reminds me that I gave my heart to Jesus, and I want to put a halt to the damage sin has done in my life. I know my sin has hurt God and hurt other people, and there's only one solution for that. What is it, soldier? Believe in Jesus, sir. That's right. Jesus died for my sins, and like a good drill sergeant, he can whip me into shape so that sin does not mess up my life. Or mine, sir. That's right, Private. God loves us, and he can forgive anyone who asks for forgiveness. Am I understood? Sir, yes, sir. I can't hear you. Sir, yes, sir. Company, march. God is good, and sin is bad. God is good, and sin is bad. God loves me, and I am glad. God loves me, and I am glad. All my sins he will forgive. All of my sins he will forgive. Believe in him, and you will live. Believe in him, and you will live. Right face. Left, 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 right, left, 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 right, left. Come on, private, with both feet, both feet. So in football, there are two parts to each team, the offense and the defense. The offense is given the ball and tries to score, while the defense tries to halt or stop them. The defense uses all sorts of strategies to stop the offense. They prevent the offense from running the ball. They prevent them from throwing long passes. They try to tackle the quarterback. They try to take the ball away. Whatever it takes, the defense will do anything to halt the offense from moving forward. Well, God wants us to halt our sin. He sent Jesus to die for our sins so he could forgive us and we could halt the damage that sin does to our lives. We can't stop sin on our own, but with the help of Jesus, we can stand up to any temptation and we can put a halt to the damage that sin does to us and to others. So let's review our memory verse. It says, by using scripture, the servant of God can be completely prepared to do every good thing. 2 Timothy 3.17. Now, just a little fun that you can have around your house today with whoever's in the room with you. Why don't you have a little shouting contest? Because we know that in boot camp, there's a whole lot of shouting that goes on. So start on one side of the room and say every other word. Pass this verse back and forth. By using scripture, the servant of God can be completely prepared to do every good thing. 2 Timothy 3, 17. Try it with your family. Shout back and forth and see if you can get that verse into your heads and into your hearts. So let's see how much you remember from our lessons. If a drill sergeant says, right face, which direction do the soldiers turn? To the right. Yep. If a drill sergeant says, left face, which direction do the soldiers turn? To the left. You got it. I think you're pretty good at this. If a drill sergeant says, about face, which direction do the soldiers turn? You got it. Backwards. 180 degrees. They make a U-turn. If a drill sergeant says, company, halt, what do the soldiers do? We didn't cover this one, but halt is the command to stop. Soldiers come to an immediate halt when they hear this command, and then they wait for further instructions. Well, during the past few weeks, we've been studying the basics of our faith, and we've learned basics with each lesson, very important lessons that we need to understand in order to live out our faith. We've learned that the Bible is true. We need to read it. We need to study it. We need to obey it. We've also learned that God made everything. 
and we learned that God is very good. Well, we learned that sin is very bad, and we also learned that all of us have sinned. And sadly, none of us are able to halt sin on our own. The price for our sin is separation from God. But the good news is that God loves us. And the God who made us never gave up on us. He made a way to help us halt our sin. He sent his son Jesus to pay the penalty that we should have had to pay. Listen to what happened to two other men who had the same sentence as Jesus. I'm going to read from Luke chapter 23, verses 32 through 43. There were also two criminals led out to be led out with Jesus to be killed. Jesus and the two criminals were taken to a place called the Skull. There the soldiers nailed Jesus to his cross, and they also nailed the criminals to their crosses, one beside Jesus on the right and the other beside Jesus on the left. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them. They do not know what they are doing. The soldiers threw lots to decide who would get his clothes. That's kind of like gambling. The people stood there watching, and the leaders made fun of Jesus. They said, if he is God's chosen one, the Christ, then let him save himself. He saved other people, didn't he? Well, even the soldiers made fun of him, and they came to Jesus and offered him some vinegar. That doesn't sound very good, does it? And they said, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. At the top of the cross, these words were written, this is the king of the Jews. Well, one of the criminals began to shout insults at Jesus. Remember, there were two, one on the left and one on the right. Aren't you the Christ? Then save yourself and save us too. But the other criminal stopped him. He said, you should fear God. You are getting the same punishment as he is. We are punished justly. We should die. But this man has done nothing wrong. And then this criminal said to Jesus, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And then Jesus said to him, listen, what I say is true. Today you will be with me in paradise. So Jesus was both God and man. And as a man, he experienced everything it is to be human except for one thing. Because he was also God, Jesus never sinned. Jesus was tempted by the devil when he spent 40 days in the wilderness, but he never gave in to sin. He always used scripture to fight what Satan was telling him. Well, because Jesus was without sin, he was the only man who never deserved to die. Jesus allowed himself to be arrested and to be crucified so that his death could pay the price for our sin. And one of these two criminals chose to believe in Jesus and the other did not. Well, God forgave the one who believed. And if we choose to believe in Jesus and live our lives for him, then we will be forgiven. Listen to what 1 John 1, 9 says. It says, but if we confess our sins, he will forgive our sins. We can trust God. He does what is right. He will make us clean from all the wrongs we have done. So how do I know that Jesus can forgive you? How do I know that Jesus can forgive anyone? Well, we only need to look at the, the man hanging on the cross right beside Jesus. Jesus was crucified with two other men, one on either side of him. And the gospel tells us that these men were real criminals. They were thieves that had been tried and convicted and sentenced, sentenced to die. And one of those two thieves joined in and they, he joined with the crowd and he mocked Jesus and he made fun of him and he insulted him. 
But the other criminal, that other man, he knew he was about to die and he was looking for hope. And he knew that Jesus was an innocent man. Maybe he had seen Jesus for himself. Maybe he had heard the stories about the miracles that Jesus did. For whatever reason, this man believed in Jesus and he saw his chance to be forgiven and he placed his trust in Jesus. And one of these days, I believe I might just get to meet that thief in person. He'll be in heaven and maybe one day I will see him if we meet together in heaven because I know that I will be there too because Jesus forgave him and Jesus has forgiven me. And Jesus told that man that he would be with him in paradise. That's where everyone who has been forgiven of their sins will one day be. And we can be forgiven like the thief on the cross, but we have to ask God to forgive us. So if you're ready to be forgiven, to make Jesus your Savior, you can do so today. You can pray and you can tell God that you believe in Jesus and you want to live your life in a way that pleases Him. God wants to make you a forever home in heaven, just like He did for the thief. All you have to do is believe in Him and live your life for Him. Jesus died for you. He already paid the penalty for your sins. He can forgive you of all of your sins. So are you ready to let him forgive you? Talk to your parents if you are, or call me, or come see me at the church. So let's go back over our Bible basics, just so you understand all of this that we're talking about. And if you have questions about it, don't be afraid to ask those questions, because these are the things that we as Christians build our lives on. These are the things that we believe. First, God's Word is true. We need to read it. We need to study it. We need to believe it, and we need to obey it because everything that God says in His Word is true. Second, we learn in His Word that God made everything. He made you. He made me. And we learn our third thing that God is very good. God made us and he is a very good God. But we also learned that sin is very bad and sin separates us from God. That's the penalty from sin. Now, God didn't create sin. That's something that man did. We chose to disobey God. And when we did, that sin entered the world and that sin separated us from God. But number five, God loves us so much. He loves you very much. And because he loves you, number six, God can forgive your sin. God sent Jesus into the world because he loves us. And Jesus died on the cross. And he asks us to make a U-turn from the life that we're living towards sin and towards death. Turn to him and choose to follow him Choose to live according to his ways. Choose to put a halt to that sin. Thank you so much for being with me today, for joining us here for this video. I'm going to pray, and then we're going to have a great song that reminds us of all of these things that we've been talking about. I hope that you are still reading the book of John. I hope you're writing down some of those really cool things that you read about or really special things. You may be getting to a point where the things that you're reading now, well, they're not really cool, but they are very special and they are very meaningful. And I hope you're spending some time each day talking to God, and I hope you're spending some time doing God things. I love you guys, and I'll see you soon. Let's pray. God, thank you for sending Jesus so that we can put a halt to the sin in our lives, so that we can put a halt to the life that we are living that leads to destruction, that leads to separation from you. Lord, I pray that every person watching this video would make a choice to make a U-turn, to put a halt to the sin in their lives, and to live for you. Father, thank you for loving us and for being a very good God. 
I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Bye, guys. in his head.